for those of you that don't know me, I am Pastor Taylor. I'm the campus pastor here at Apple Valley Campus. Uh, you know, Levi has almost gotten the promotion, but not quite uh, to campus pastor. Um, but who knows, right? Uh, he, he's incredible, and so we, we love Pastor Levi. And, and Kenzie, welcome back. Come on. <laughs> welcome back. I'm surprised Porter wasn't right here while you were singing. Uh, <laughs> Might be a little loud for him in here, but uh, we're, we're so glad you're here. Last week, uh, we're in a two-part series with our campus pastors, where last week we talked about remembering. How do you remember 2023? And then, and then now we're looking forward at the next year, and how do we, what do we focus on? And before we jumped in, I wanted to read a story about resolutions. How many have resolutions in here? You came up with some resolutions in here. A couple? Only a couple. Many of you did not. Well, we, this is a good message for you today. On, on focus. Billy called his parents on the new year and he, and he wished them a happy new year. He asked how they were doing and, and when he was talking to his dad, he said, dad, what, what do you think is your new year's resolution for this coming year? And, and his dad thought about it and, and his dad answered thoughtfully, to make your mother, mother as happy as I can all year. Yeah, all the, all the moms and wives said Amen. And a little jab right there, right? Like, and, then, and then Billy talked to his mom a little bit, and, and you know, they're going back and forth. And then Billy said, Mom, what's, what's your resolutions this year? And Billy's mom answered, to see that your dad keeps his New Year's resolution. <laughs> it's a new year. We're excited for what God is going to do. You know, we believe a, a statement when it, when it comes to cars that your, your rear view is smaller than your front window, right? And there's a reason for that, because it is important to look back, but what's more important is what's in front of you, what's ahead of you. The best is yet to come. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 3 says God brings us from glory to glory, from good to gooder. 20, 2023 was incredible, but really we look forward to what God is going to do in the next year. Amen? Amen. This year, this year, this year is going to be incredible and it's going to be filled with incredible things, but I want to challenge you with something. As we look forward to this year and as we are looking at what is to come next, we, you know, I, I asked if anyone has resolutions. Not many of us do, but if many of us would be honest, we'd say in 2024, I have, I have goals, I have dreams, I have ambitions, I have things that I want to achieve that are high up there. I'm hoping maybe it's a career change. Maybe it's to have a baby. Maybe it's to be healthy. Maybe it's blank. But I have high ambitions for this year. I have high desires. And we make statements like, new year, new me. And I want to challenge you to, make, to change your statement to this. And, and my message today is new year, new focus. New year, new focus. <laughs> focused on is where you're going to go. You know, I, I remember in middle school, uh, I, you know, and I was like this short, and I was just a little ball, and I had long blonde hair, and, and I, I was walking by the cafeteria, and I remember just looking over at one of my friends, and just sort of, I seeing him in the crowd, right, and I'm looking over there, and walking, walking, and then bam, I smacked right into a pole, and it was one of those, like, like literally you didn't see it coming, and then you fall down moments. And as a middle schooler, I still got to work through that with my therapist on that moment, right? But, but it was one of those, like, like, just you did not see it coming because I was unfocused, right? I was looking at what was around me and not what was ahead of me. And where your focus is fixed is the direction you'll go. And so this year, what I challenge you is to say, what is your focus what direction are you going, and what are you looking for? Everyone in here would agree, I want an incredible year, but what does that actually mean? And so before we get started, I want to pray and just invite God into this. So if you will, will you just put your hands out in front of you, and we're just going to say, Holy Spirit, we invite you right now to speak to us. God, all of us in here would say we want an incredible year. None of us would say we want a crummy year, a terrible year, uh, a same year. No, God, we want a new year. We want you to do things greater than you did before. We want to see mighty things happen. We look with anticipation to what you're going to do. So, Lord God, we just give you this time. We respond to you, Lord God. We open up our eyes. We open up our ears. We open up our mind to you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. 
if you want an incredible year, if you want a year filled with glory to glory, one of the best years of your life, I, I would challenge you that you need to refocus your mind, that you need to refocus your mind, and that success starts between your ears, that the greatest thing you can change this year is your thoughts. You know, science has shown you can go three weeks without food. Come on, somebody, you can do a week. Yeah. You can go three weeks without food, three days without water, you need water, three minutes without oxygen, but you can't go three seconds without using your mind, right? From the minute you're up in the morning, that mind is going. From the minute that you are doing anything right now, you are processing what I'm saying and your thoughts are moving. You see, what is kept in your mind comes out in your life. And the thoughts you think determine the direction of your life. I've also heard it this way, uh, a quote is, your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thought. And you know, scripture proves this. Scripture and science prove this, actually. In Proverbs 4.23, in the Good News Translation, it says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. Scripture proves that, that as, as I think, my life is shaped. That, that as I, the thoughts that enter my head are going to determine where I'm going to go in life. And, and science would actually agree with this. And I think it's so cool when, when God's creation is validated by his word. And when everyone goes to this aha moment, but it's in, the, it's in something called a neural pathway. Anyone heard of that, a neural pathway? Yeah, probably many people in here. But a, but a neural pathway is basically how your brain responds chemically to things that, that happen in your life. So, so if you have a positive thought or something that you like, you get, you get a neurotransmitter of, of what's called dopamine. It's illegal, it's an exciting thing, it's awesome, and you get like a little bit of a buzz when something that you like happens, you get dopamine. And science tells us that when you get those dopamine hits, that your mind starts to create pathways, neural pathways is what they're actually called. And you can look it up, you can fact check me all you want. And, and, and literally that when, when your mind likes something or when, you're, when you think a thought, it triggers dopamine and then it starts to travel a path in your brain that makes it easier to travel and think that thought more often. So what do I mean by this, right? Like, like when, when you know, okay, so like if you love a certain kind of food, let's say, let's say it's Asian food and, and you just like some pad thai or something, and your mind, you get dopamine hits when you eat pad thai. And so when, you, when that pad thai is served to you and you sit there and there's dopamine that, that hits your brain, it, every time you're creating a stronger pathway that you like pad thai more and more and more. Amen. Thanks, Tony. I do like pad thai. Or, or uh, let's say, you know, I'm at work and my wife says, come home, I miss you. Immediately, I get a surge of dopamine, right? And, and, and my thoughts are immediately, they travel to going home. I, I, if I think the same thoughts, it's easier for me to think that thought again and again and again. But it's also why pornography, alcohol, addiction happens. It's because you think a thought, you act on that thought, you get dopamine, and then it's easier for you to think that thought again and again and again. And, and it's actually proven that in our brain, the more we travel a thought and the more we act on it, the stronger it is in our brain. That, that it is actually creates a strong pathway that if we keep walking that pathway, it's really hard to get off that pathway. That it's really hard to change the way you think. Every thought you have creates a neurochemical change in your body. And there's a, there's a scientific discovery called cognitive behavior psychology. And this discovery is that the majority of our problems are related to broken thought patterns. It's discovered that the majority of our relational problems, eating disorders, anxiety, financial problems, are actually have to do more with our thoughts than are do our actions. 
And it's because neural pathways have been created in people's minds that they keep on living out and living out. I'll give you an example. If, if at one point in time, I, I, uh, you know, someone was out to get me and, and you know, they had bad intentions for me, what happens is I start thinking a thought that everyone has bad intentions for me. If one person had bad intentions for me, I start to have a mistrust of everyone around me. And so I start thinking that again and again and again. And everyone I meet, I'm, I'm analyzing them. Do they have bad intentions for me? And those thoughts are creating pathways in my brain that say that everyone has bad intentions for me. And if I live that way, thinking that about everyone I come in contact with, eventually what happens is I turn into a victim. Because I start to turn into someone who says, they always want to hurt me. And, and then when I turn into a victim, I start to act like a victim. Or it's the same thing with addiction. If, if I think that I'm addicted, then literally there's neural pathways being created on my addiction that say I'm addicted. Because I'm saying I'm addicted, not just the neural pathway to the substance, but I'm saying I'm addicted to it, and I'm creating a thought, a lie, that I eventually act out. And if you believe a lie long enough, you start to live as if that lie is true. If you believe a lie long enough, you start to live as if that lie is true. And so science and scripture agree, what you think will determine your year. So let me ask you this, how's your thoughts? How's your thought life? We got all kind of goals, we got all kind of resolution, but what is up here? And I want to do a little thought audit, if you will. Where we take, a, where we take a, a quick little poll on where your thought life is at. And so um, they, they have this little scorecard up there. And so um, I'm going to go through each number. And if this is you, I'm going to have you stand up. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> many of you got very anxious in your thoughts right there. But how's your thoughts? You know, uh, uh, let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you wake up in the morning? Do you wake up worried or do you wake up peaceful? That's good. You didn't give me a number, though. Uh, you just said peaceful. Well, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I don't wake up at an 11. But how do you wake up? Do you wake up thinking about immediately everything that needs to be done? Do you wake up immediately thinking, how am I going to pay the bills? How are we going to get the kids to school? How am I, what are we going to do? Well, then you, you, you generally have a worried mind. But if you wake up and you're an 11, I think that was Dave that said 11. Uh, Barb would have to say if that's true or not. Um, <laughs> then you wake up and you are, you are peaceful. You know that it's all going to be taken care of, right? That'd be a 10. Or, or how about negative or positive? When, when something happens in, in your work day and maybe a boss says something to you, maybe something, uh, a coworker just you know, makes a little sly comment, slips it in there. Do you take that as negative and think about, man, that, that person, I, I, I just don't like them. Man, that person, they think bad about me. Man, I don't even know what my boss, that, that'd be negative thinking. Or do you take it and do you, do you, are your thoughts positive when they say something? Or how about traffic, right? <laughs> then maybe that's not a good example. <laughs> that's just a different, that's just a different, that's a different algorithm. We're not going to do that one. I'll leave that one alone. Um, how, about, how about worldly versus eternal? Are your thoughts worldly or are they eternal? When uh, Pastor Levi was talking about tithing up here, immediately where did your mind go, right? If my mind immediately went to the bank, if my mind immediately went to I don't have anything, well then honestly my mind is not on eternal things, it's on worldly things, right? Right? It's on my worldly limitations of my bank account. Or, or do you think in eternity's impact, right? When somebody comes and, and they knock at your door and they need help with something and maybe their car or their, you know, their house or something or they need to borrow something, are you inconvenienced and in saying, I don't have time for this? Or do you say, man, I see an opportunity to witness, right? Those are two different things. Worldly versus eternal, now, let's not all pretend like we're, we're super saints here and, and we all do the right thing all the time because we don't, right? That thing is sliding. There are days that we wake up and our thought life is better than other days. 
But I will let you know that what is inside of you will come out of you. And, and science has proven we literally have a negativity bias. Neuroscience shows that negative events imprint on our brains more quickly and linger longer than positive ones. I heard a quote on it, the mind treats things of beauty like Teflon and negative things like Velcro. What does that mean? Teflon is like a nonstick pan, right? You can, you can cook on it, you can make some eggs on it, but everything slips right off of it. But Velcro is literally things stick to it and they stay on it. A negativity bias is saying everything negative I tend to just absorb, right? What spreads faster on social media? Positivity or negativity? Negativity. Something going wrong, right? What about you do a presentation at work? Five people said it was incredible. One person said, yeah, I just didn't like that part. What do you think about? You think about the one person that said they didn't like it, right? My wife, I can tell her she's beautiful three times a day, most beautiful woman I've ever behold, but the minute I say, I just don't think that dress looks good on you, I'd never do that. I'd never do that. Yeah, <laughs> still learning. <laughs> but what does she think about? She thinks about the negative comment, right? Ne we have a negativity bias where negativity naturally sticks onto us, and it is something all of us have to wrestle. Jesus even, even talked about what, that what's inside of you will come out of you, that what you think determines what you do. In Matthew 15, and you're welcome to turn your Bibles there, <clears throat> Matthew 15, verse 16, he talks about, he talks about what's inside of you. Now, he talks about your heart, but really what's in your heart is what comes through your mind. And he says this in verse 16. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, these are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands do not defile them. So he says, it is what comes out of you that defiles you. It's what's in your heart. Now, how does something get in your heart, right? It's not like Cupid's arrow that like thoughts of lust and thoughts of greed just pluck, you know? No, it's not, right? It, it first enters into your mind, and what you allow to stay into your mind goes into your heart. What you allow to stay into your mind goes into your heart. So if you think negative thoughts, if you allow negative thoughts to come into your mind all the time and to stay there, eventually you will ooze negativity. It just happens. You can't control it. It just will be, right? You can't lust over that coworker, thinking about them all the time and never, and not act on it. Because what is inside of you will come out of you. You will act on it. And Jesus said that. But let me tell you, there is hope. There is hope for our thoughts. Romans 12, 2 is a key scripture to today. And it says this, and, and I'm reading the NLT translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new, per new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So changing the way I think leads me to understand God's will for my life. Changing the way I think means I walk in the good and pleasing and perfect will. It leads to a new life. It doesn't just automatically give you a new life. It leads to a new life. But if you will fix your thoughts, you will fix your life. If you will change it from worldly, negative, fleshly things and put them on godly, holy things, it will change your life. And, and there's another word for changing the way you think that we talk about all the time, and that is repentance. That repentance literally means I turn and I change. And that as I change the way I think, I am turning from an old way of thinking and I'm engaging in a new way of thinking. And my challenge for you is that repentance should be our number one goal this year. Changing the way we think from the worldly perspective to the eternal perspective should be our primary goal this year. That's why fasting is so important. That's why fasting is so important. Because when I put myself in a posture of fasting, I'm literally starving my flesh and I'm feeding my spirit. 
I'm literally putting what's in my mind only godly and holy things. And it says in 2 Chronicles that those who call on him, seek him, and humble, them, humble themselves, he hears from heaven. And so we need, we need to learn repentance, changing the way we think. And in order to repent in your way of thinking, you need to fix the way you respond. In order to repent in your way of thinking, you need to fix the way you respond. Anyone ever heard of uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul? Yeah. yeah. One of the, yeah, you like those books? That's good. I don't know if I've read them. But um, <clears throat> the, one of the guys who, who helped develop it is Jack Canfield. And he has this uh, sort of formula. He's a famous coach. And he has this formula for how we live our life. And, and they're going to put it on the screen. But it's E plus R equals O. E plus R <clears throat> equals O. And the idea is that events plus response equal outcome. That there are events that happen in your life, you don't control those. I don't control what happens in my life, right? I don't control when I get yelled at. I don't control when I get let go. I don't control when someone decides to go do something. That is out of my control. But what's in my control is my response. That's within my control. And those two things combined are my outcome. I know it's not rocket science, but it's the same way in the, your way of thinking. There are things that happen outside my control, and I control my response to them, my thoughts to them, and so is my outcome. Romans 8 speaks to this. <clears throat> in verses 6 to 7, it says this, The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God, does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Isn't that so interesting in Romans 8 how, how Paul talks about literally the mind governed by flesh leads to death. The mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. And, 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 and I, I like that they word, use the word govern, because the word govern is, is each government has rules, laws, and ways that determine how the land is run. They have rules, laws, and ways that determine how everyone's supposed to function and act, and your mind works the same way. Your mind has ways that it looks and interprets thoughts. And last week we, we touched on it, but your mind has a filter, your mind has a way that it filters out things and, and governs over it. And, and I wanted to uh, do an example of this. Uh, in my front row, do I have one brave volunteer? One brave volunteer that come up here. All right, Angel, come on up. Come on up. And I wanted to show this in a filter. Man, you're so tall. You just, <laughs> you just got right up there. That was crazy. But what I have here, you see, because... Because there are many thoughts in life, and there are many filters in life, and there's many, many different things in, in your way of thinking. But what I have here, and I want to show you this a little bit, and then Angel's going to drink, drink one of them, uh, is <laughs> I have two bowls of water, and, and these water, this is your thoughts. This is the events that happen around you. These are the things that are happening. This is pure and unfiltered. But then... What happens a lot of times is we have junk from the world. We have negativity bias. We have uh, things we're going through. We have emotions and attitudes. And then this is, this is what we drink. This is, our, this is our mind. And so a lot of times, you know, there's, there's different things that happen in our life, but there's also different filters in our life. Some are, some are finer than others. Some are uh, not as useful as others. But we're going to use this filter for this example. And so... Uh, you see, every mind has a filter, as Romans 8 was saying. There's a way that it's governed. There's a way that it interprets and reads things that happen to them. Now, if, if something happens in your life and, and there's a lot of gunk that goes in your life and there's different negativity happening and you don't know what to think about it, and, 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 and let's say this is, this is the way the thought enters your mind, is it's, it's, it's negative, it's evil, it's wrong. We all have a filter, and some people's thoughts are very unfiltered. They allow whatever in there. They allow whatever to enter in their mind and stay in their mind. Doesn't matter what's happening around them, their filter 
every thought is a valid thought. Every thought is a real thought. And when that happens, what we have is the thought enters our mind, and there's still a filter of something, but then this is what our thoughts look like. Did you drink that? You sure? You don't really know what's in here. Positive. Okay. Thank you. You're playing along. But let's say there's other kinds of filters, and I have to make this one dirty too because that's the world. There's another kind of filter, and let's say it's, it's the good filter. It's the mind governed by the spirit. And in this filter is, is everything is run through God's word. Everything is run through thinking about things that are holy, pure, righteous, pertaining to the spirit. This mind says it doesn't matter what comes into my mind. It's what I allow to stay in this mind, it, it has a finer filter to what it allows to stay in its brain. And, and what, it, what it allows in its mind is only what is filtered through the spirit. Now, it works a little slower. <laughs> and that can preach, but I'm not going to say that. But it works a little slower, but what you get on the other side is a pure and unfiltered water. Would you drink that? Right. Because nothing has gone through it. So now we're going to have you drink one and then drink the other angel Perfect. and tell us what you want to I'm kidding. Thank you, angel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, we have a filter to our thoughts. We have a good filter and a bad filter. We have a way that we interpret and allow things into our mind. Literally, as, as it said in Romans 8, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You decide what stays in your mind. I think of like an example of, um, let's say your coworkers give you a hard time because you leave early on Wednesday to go to church. And, and they slide in little comments about how you leave early. And, and a bad filter would be, I'm nervous scared, anxious, and I want to please them, so I end up going late to church. That's a bad filter. That lets anything in. A good filter would say, my job is fleeting, my eternity is not. You see, you can't control what comes into your mind, but you can control your filter. You can control what allows it to stay. And as we talked and shared about resolutions. Of all, the, of all the different resolutions, one of the greatest ones is fitness, right? Top resolutions are actually to lose weight, get financially healthy, to quit something, and go on vacation. Those are actually like the top four. But, but a lot of them are fitness. And of all the fitness resolutions, I looked this up, a new study found that 73% of people give up on their fitness resolutions, on their training resolutions. And a lot of us make these resolutions that are gone with the wind in a second. But I challenge you in this, but what about your mind? What's your resolution when it comes to your thoughts? Because you can train your thoughts. You can train your thoughts. I talked about the pathways. You can train your thoughts to think positive, life-giving, lovely things. Or you can train your thoughts to think negative, insecure, and wrong. Dr. Caroline Leaf said this. In her, in her book, Switch on Your Brain, as we think, we change the physical nature of our brain. As we consciously direct our thinking, we can wire out toxic patterns of thinking and replace them with healthy thoughts. Now, she's done studies about literally how your thoughts actually, ch it, it physically changes your brain. Like, like physically, not just the transmitter, not, but literally physically, and, and literally, how are you training your thoughts? How are you training what's coming into your mind and what you do with it? And 2 Corinthians 10 is one of the greatest scriptures to training our thoughts. And, and, it, and, it, and it speaks of a working out of the mind. And it says this in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 
And I just love that idea. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. In Greek, it literally translates like to lead away captive or to subjugate and bring under control. And so when it's talking about your thoughts, what I picture is almost like an arrest and an interrogation. These thoughts come into my mind. I don't control that they come in, but I control what I do with them. I take them, I arrest them, and I interrogate them. And I want to challenge you with three questions with every thought that you find in your brain again and again. Three questions to interrogate that word. And that's this, why am I thinking this thought? What does it say about others? And what does God say about this? That if I'm to take every thought captive, I need almost like an FBI interrogation. Take that thing, ring it for everything it's worth, and really understand it, not let it just lead my life. That's a bad filter. Why am I thinking this thought? Why is this thought coming into my head? Because a lot of times it tells us there's something else going on. What does it say about others? Because a lot of time how we treat people determines the, the healthiness that's on the inside. And then what does God say about this? And by the time you get to what does God say about this, you have ringed out the truth of that thought for what it's actually supposed to be. I want to challenge you, train your thoughts to be intentional on God this year. Win the war in your mind by training your thoughts. It's not enough just not to think them, but replace them with the divine power in God's word. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. On the flip end, if it's not those, exclude it from your thought life. It said, think about these things. In 2 Corinthians 10, it says it has divine power to demolish strongholds. Strongholds are deeply entrenched enemy territory, things in your life that are just so, they're deeply entrenched. It's like a neural pathway you've walked again and again and again of negativity, of addiction, of blank. How do we destroy that with divine power? And the divine power is in God's word. We take this stronghold the enemy is trying to build and we replace it with God's word. You know, Pastor Alex is doing something, a year in the Bible. Pastor Alex and Pastor James, every Wednesday they're doing a live stream on it, but, but every day there's a, there's, a, there's a couple chapters to read of the book of the Bible. I want to encourage you, read it. Don't just take my word for it and don't just take Pastor James or other people, but read this thing. When you fill your mind with this, you will be equipped to replace your thoughts. When you fill your mind with this, your filter gets a little easier, right? But if you don't know God's word, you are susceptible. You have a weak filter. Last thing I wanna encourage you, and it's this, to act like a cow. I didn't say look like one, I said act like one. But cows do something that's called ruminating. And the word ruminate, literally, it, it can be translated to meditate as well. But it's the idea, and many of you have heard this, that a cow takes grass, it chews it, it chews it, it swallows it, it throws it back up, and then it chews it, it chews it, it swallows it, it throws it back up, and then it chews it, and it does that again and again. It literally just gets every ounce out of that, that piece of grass that it can. And I want to encourage you to do the same with God's word. When you fill your mind with God's word, meditate on that thing. Take it, chew it, think about it, put it everywhere you can. Make it so that my thoughts are changed by God's word. So that when you think this thought that you say, I'm not attractive enough, you're well equipped to say, no, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That, that when, when a thought enters your mind, I'm always going to be miserable. I'm always going to be depressed. You realize, no, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That when you say, I'm always going to be broke, you realize Luke 6 says that it is given to me overpouring when I give. And if you change your thoughts, you change your prayers. If you change your prayers, you change your life. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life 
in death. So what you speak will come about. What you think will come about. And I have a couple prayers for you, and they're going to put them on the screen of different situations in your life, and then we're going to respond. But you can go to, go to this next one. We don't need to look at the cows. Uh, you can go to the forgiveness one, cynicism and forgiveness. So this is a prayer I want to give you, that when you're struggling with the thought of cynicism and unforgiveness with somebody, I want you to speak this prayer. Why don't you say, with God's help, I will get rid of all bitterness and skepticism. I choose to believe the best about others and be kind, compassionate, and loving. I will love and forgive others as Jesus has loved and forgiven me. If you're struggling with negativity, here's a prayer for you. You can pray, God, by your power, I take every thought captive and make it obedient to the truth of Christ. Because you are good, I choose to think on that which is good, right, true, helpful, and worthy of praise. As I trust in you, your peace will guard my heart, my soul, and my mind. How about worry and fear? You can pray this, God, you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. By your grace, I choose to cast my cares upon you, knowing you care for me. I I refuse to worry about that which doesn't exist, but rather take hold in faith that which does. You will never leave me or forsake me. In Christ, I will overcome this what worries me. But if you don't know God's word, you don't know what you're going to pray. If your filter's weak, then your prayers are weak. What do I allow in my thought life? I need to train my thoughts. And just like any training, it starts small, and you keep on working on it, and you keep on working on it until you get to a point where you realize, wow, I actually understand God's word, and I'm using it in ways I never thought I would. And that's my challenge to you. You want an incredible year? Fix your thoughts. Fill them with God's word. Change your filter.